Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video tutorial, we're going to be talking about melee attacks. You can see I have a character here. If I press my spacebar, I can swing my sword. When I get close to these enemies, when I swing my sword, I can hit them. And you can see that I just can't be on them and hit them. My sword actually has to be uh, within a certain range or within a certain radius. We're going to talk about how we can achieve this effect. So let's roll the intro and let's get right to the code. Okay, so the code that we have here, it's a pretty basic setup. I've added a bunch of more enemies into my room here and we have our trusty green square. We're gonna go over the enemies just because there's really not much to it. Um, I guess we can ignore this one for now, but in the create event, all we're doing is make sure that the image speed is set to zero and we set a random alarm, which is this alarm zero, and that will move our enemy up, down, left, right. It's just basically just saying move in a random direction. Uh, we're setting this image speed to zero because I'm cheating here and in my character in the sprite, the next frame is the hit frame, which is just a red square. If we switch over to the object player, I'm gonna close that and bring up the create. You can see that this is hopefully kind of our standard stuff here where we are creating a weapon holder. So a place where we can hold on to our weapons. We're just assigning it some random, sorry, the depth of our current player minus one. So that puts the sword in front of us. Uh, you could have uh, instance create layer here and you could assign a layer itself. Uh, and then we are just assigning the object weapon sword. We have some offsets here, which we set in the end step, and that's just to follow our square around. If we weren't using the end step, we would notice some kind of lag between our player and the weapon itself. If I run my game and I'm moving around, you shouldn't see any lag here on the square. If I were to move this, let's change this event, change it to step and begin step. Now if I hit F5, you should see some lag here between our sword and our our character. It's a little easier to see when we move left and right. And you can see it hopefully in the video a little bit up and down. That's why we have our movement in the end step. So our character moves and then our weapon moves and then the frame is updated. Now in the step event, we have a couple things here. I will come back to this. I'm just going over the basics. Uh, we have some a very simple movement code here. So, and you can download this project on the video. So all I'm saying here is if we press the space board, or space board, space key, and we are not swinging, we just set swing into true. Uh, we tell the weapon the image index is zero and then start the sword animation, which you can see right here. This is the sword animation. If I hit play, it is a simple up and down animation and it's pretty fast. So we'll close that. When the animation is done, so if we are swinging, we're checking to see if the current frame that we're on, plus two, and we're using plus two because we're using twice the speed of the image, is bigger than the maximum number of frames, then we just set the sword back to idle. So that all this code doing is doing right here, if we hit this space bar, it's swinging that sword and then setting it back. So if I hammer on the space, you can see I'm going um, I'm hitting stuff with my sword, but nothing's actually happened. So right now, if I go over to one of these players, or start one of these enemies, I can swing to my heart's content. No matter what I do, I just cannot hit this enemy. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to create a little hit box whenever we, um, we have our sword come down. Now you can see that I already have a hit box here, and it's just a sprite. Now all my other sprites are 32 by 32 and I've chosen a hitbox of 24 by 24. And the reason why I'm not using a super small hitbox is because then you got to be pretty precise with how you're going to hit things. Sometimes you'll want a small one, sometimes you may want a little bit larger one. It'll give your player a little bit more lenience when they're trying to do something. We already have a sprite hitbox here. and I already have an object hitbox in my code. If I load this up, you can see it's very simple. In the first, the create event, we're setting alarm zero, which is this guy, and it's gonna last for one frame. The alarm zero, all it does is destroy itself. So this is basically gonna last for one frame and then completely destroy itself. So all we really need to do is in the player here, I have a little comment here for hitbox. 
Now we could do it pretty much anywhere we want, but this seems to be the easiest solution that we're going to work with. All we're going to do is add a certain frame of this animation. So we have, how many frames do we have? We have 20 frames. So on, on a certain frame, let's say frame, with frame five, five and six here, we're going to create a hitbox object. So we can do that by saying alarm underscore set and let's set the alarm zero. And we're going to say on frame five. This just seems to be the easiest and simplest solution we can have. So on frame five, we're going to set alarm zero. So we can say hitbox alarm. So all we need to do now is actually instantiate this hitbox object on frame five, which is alarm zero. So we could say instance create. Uh, let's do instance create depth because we're not dealing with any layers here. And what we want to use is the weapon dot X and weapon dot Y variables. And you may be wondering where these came from. Well, in the very start of our create event, we created an instance called weapon. So we're getting the X and Y position of the weapon we're holding. So we're going to say create it at the X and Y position. And then the depth, we'll just say minus one to have it on top. And what we want to create is the object hitbox. Now, right now, if we were to do this, this would work. However, it's going to take the it's going to take the anchor point of where our um, where our sword is. So when you can see what I'm hitting, it's taking the anchor point, which is down here. We want to be able to create it on the end of the sword. So all we have to do really is we could take our sword animation and we could go to that frame and we can do some math. Basically what we want to say is, okay, our origin is two and 28. We want to find out what it would be to come down here. So I'm going to skip ahead and not really do the math because I've already kind of figured it out. But I'm going to make two new variables called offset x, and I'm going to say that's 35 here, offset y equals 10. So this is going to be the x and y offset. So it's going to take us 35 pixels, so say plus offset x, to move over from to the right. And it's going to take 10 pixels, offset y, and move that box into the correct position. So if I hit F5 now and we run our game, we should see that purple box now appear where our sword is actually being hit. Now I should be able to come over here and you can see that I can indeed hit these enemies now. And the reason we can hit those enemies is if we come here, we have a simple little collision here. So this was add event collision and then object hitbox. All we are doing is saying with other, so with the hitbox, then we want to destroy it. We move our character eight pixels to the right. We set the character's image index to one. So that is the red, the red hit. And then once we're all done that, we set alarm one to room speed times one, or a tenth of a second. And all that's doing is just changing the back. Now you may be wondering, when we are running our game and I hit my space bar, I can see this purple square. Obviously you don't want that in your game. So we can easily fix this by just going to this object and we can uncheck visible. So now when we run our game and I hammer on the space key, you can see that that object is no longer coming up. And we can still go over to our guys here and we can hit them, make them go off the screen if we want it to. So you can see that's a fairly easy and simple way to create a melee attack. And it also lets you use a hitbox when using a bunch of different weapons. So hopefully you've learned a thing or two and you can implement some of this stuff in your own games. Thanks for watching.